Well, when we print our digital files, we print them on archival media. We use Epson archival ink, and I coat them with a eco print spray. The Premier Art Eco Spray is UV resistant and it prolongs the life of our prints. So we want them to last as long as we can. One old time photographer said, never let your prints see the sky. So it's one thing to have sun burning through on them, but even the light from the sky is going to cause fading over time. But even the, the paint of the frames is going to fade and everything fades over time. But these photographs are good for over a hundred years when they're printed like this and preserved with the spray. In the meantime, like 75 years from now, it can always be copied and restored. The big problem, people have told me the nice thing about digital photography is you can just delete the pictures that you don't like. Well, this is certainly true. But the problem is, how are we going to save the pictures that we want to keep? not just for 10 years or 20 years, but to save them for future generations. How are we going to save those files? I used to think we'd save them on DVDs or CDs, but that technology is disappearing. A lot of computers don't have optical drives anymore. You're kind of scuppered in a way. You don't know how you're going to save those files. What are you going to do? I think the best thing that I've thought of so far is to clone the operating drive of the computer, the C drive, to clone that because that's where our Lightroom catalog is stored on the C drive. So if I have a cloned copy of that C drive, once a week, say once a week I clone that, over the weekend I clone that drive. If we lose anything, we're only going to lose the first week's work. We won't lose everything in the past, so we can always go back and update our catalog because most of everything will be there. Our operating system will be there. All our hard work generating color profiles will be saved. All those profiles will be there on that clone copy of the C drive. So say somebody gives us uh, ransomware and totally locks up our keyboard, destroys all our files. All I have to do is go into the filing cabinet, grab that other C drive, put it in, and then back up our other files because the C drive will be there and we have cloned copies of our drives on the computer. I've got two six terabyte drives in the computer with all of our files on there and I have backup of those. I'm going to show you how we went about that and how our operating system that we've set up is designed to save our files. This is something I've pretty much come up with on my own. Uh, there's maybe a better way to do it. Anybody's got any better ideas? Let me know. Thanks. Well, now I tell you, we spent a lot of time traveling around. This is 10,000 feet up in the air at the bristle cone trees. Cost me a lot of money to drive to California, drive up the mountain. Driving down the mountain cost me $500 to get the brakes fixed. I was really lucky to get it done at that price, but I've got the photographs. I've got my prints here, but I want to save those files. If I want to go back like five years from now or 10 years from now, I want to be able to find that file or find this file or this file. I want to have my files available. So how are we going to save those files? When we import, when we're on the road, we use the laptop and we save the files to the laptop, to an external drive, and we also keep the flashcards that everything's shot on. So I've got lots of copies. I've got three redundancies on the road. When we get home, we put everything onto the computer, and I still want that saved because our computer's on the internet. If we got some kind of a virus or anything happened, we could lose all your files. So I'm going to show you how we've set up our program so we get everything saved. I'm using a free program called Macrium Reflect. I'm just updating it right now. Then we're going to back up the hard drive to an external hard drive. This is our SSD drive right here. So we're going to clone this disk. Select the disk to clone to. Got to look down here. Okay. 
Well, now that the backup is complete onto this drive, we'll just shut this drive off. Now then, I'll just mark this. So there's the backup of the SSD drive. We're all good. And like I said, when we're on the road, we back up all of our files to external drives. There's a one and two terabyte, and there's a five terabyte drive that we store all of our files on. We keep the raw files on the little flashcards as well while we're on the road, so we've got lots of backups while we're traveling. When we're importing into Lightroom on the computer, we set Lightroom to make a second backup to this drive right here, as well as the drive on the computer. We have external drives, like this expansion drive right here. I'm gonna show you how that works. So we use an expansion drive to back up the internal drives on the computer. Our computer has two six terabyte drives inside and two six terabyte external drives. Well, now this is what the Seagate six terabyte expansion drives look like. Now they have some software that comes with them that you could use to back up the files but we use a, another free software called FreeSync, I believe it is. I'm gonna show you a little bit how that works. It's right on the, it's an icon right on the desktop. So these are six terabytes. Here's one here. We've installed the OneDrive. We're not ready to move on to this one yet because we're still polishing up the files. And this uh, file sync program allows us to synchronize the two drives, the drive that's in the computer and the one on the desktop. And the nice thing about it is once you've synced your files, you can disconnect the drive and should anything happen to your hard drive, you can always restore it. So here's free file sync right here, this little icon. We just double click that. Oh, it's time for another update. Well, the updates are free just like the program is, so we'll update that. Seconds left, eight or 10 seconds to download this. Might as well be right up to date. Now we'll just double click there, here we go. And you see here, there's our image bank, B, B image bank is right inside the computer and D image bank is our external drive. This will compare. So we'll just hit synchronize and update. It's gonna take a while. Now we're synchronizing and updating the files. It's pretty remarkable that you can get these programs for free. I'll put a link in the description of everything so you'll be able to get these files. Well now, there you see the synchronization. It's what it's going to do here. It doesn't really tell us how long it's going to take. But this could take quite a while, so I think I'm going to wait until tonight to run this. There's no need to do this right now. But what this will do, this is the file, this is the hard drive in the computer. And this is the one on the desktop. See, D, D image bank, D means on the desk. B, well, I don't know what that means, but that's what we called it. So anyway, we're gonna back up all the files onto this drive right here. And when Mary gets done saving all the files and changing everything that she's doing, then we're going to put the other expansion drive, the one that's still in the box, Seagate expansion drive still in the box. 
we're going to use that one to back up the second drive in the computer. Then we have two copies of everything and you can store them either here or on off-site somewhere in case of a fire or something. This is the way we used to store all of our files. Everything on CDs and numbers on the CDs so you can find what you're looking for, numbers and dates and what it is. Just got right out of hand. And then you have this huge case of DVDs and CDs and you don't have a drive anymore to actually run them on. So I don't really know where it's all going, but I think the hard drive solution that we put in will keep us for the next couple years. Well, I started the synchronization anyway. It said it was gonna take 14 days or something like that. Now it's down to about five hours and a half, but the time keeps changing. It's not reliable at all. Four hours now. Now that we've shown you how we handle our digital files, I think we're going to show you when we work from negatives. This is from a black and white negative that I shot in 1972. And these are some 4x5 Ektachrome slides that I shot quite some time ago. What are we going to do with these? Eh? How are we going to save these? Because you wind up with huge boxes full of things. And it's just so confusing. So if you come on back, keep an eye for our video, which is going to be saving our analog files, which would be negatives, transparencies, 35 millimeter slides, all that type of thing. Thanks for visiting Bella's Vistas. Please like and subscribe. Click the little notification bell as well.